Please welcome our next presenter, Steve Votaw from Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. Hi. Diamond is seven months pregnant, and she's been sleeping on the floor for her entire pregnancy. After recently experiencing homelessness, she and her family were placed in an apartment, but it was an empty apartment. There were no beds for a good night's sleep, no table for sharing a meal, and no sofa for spending time together. The sad thing is, Diamond's family is only one of thousands in central Ohio who are living in an empty house or apartment. But why is this the case when we throw 9.8 million tons of furniture into landfill every year. The furniture is out there. The question is, how do we get it to families in need? The Furniture Bank has a solution to this problem. We collect gently used furniture from over 7,000 donors and give that to families in need. Last year, we served 3,400 families with over 50,000 pieces of furniture. We ventured into the social enterprise arena in 2016 by launching our first furniture thrift store called Furniture with a Heart. There we, saw, we sell a small percentage of what we collect and use the surplus to serve additional families. By refining this business model, we believe we can serve even more families and serve as a prototype for other communities around the country to replicate. Our proposed business model is to create a smaller combined furniture bank thrift store under one roof. This model will allow us to reduce costs and improve efficiencies by utilizing the staff, trucks, and warehouse space to carry out both operations. Our plan is to launch this model in a mid-sized community serving about 400 families and then replicate it in four more Central Ohio communities that have little or no service like ours. Our thrift store is proof that this model works and can succeed. The surplus generated from our 50,000 square foot facility has grown from $40,000 in our first year to $400,000 last year. By the, launching this model and creating five more enterprises like this, we can serve an additional 2,000 families and generate a surplus of $500,000. The Furniture Bank needs another $100,000 to launch this innovative model. Thus far, we have raised $200,000 and, ask, and are asking for your investment tonight. We know that a home is more than four walls. Families like Diamond need your support to create an environment where families can overcome the challenge of poverty, where hope can flourish and opportunity can thrive. Please, let's work together and create a community where every family has a home filled with hope. Thank you. So wh what did you learn through the experience of opening that first larger store? And was, was the size and the lack of co-location with your other program the biggest impetus to want to start a smaller co-located facility? Um, yes. The, the for, we wanted a store this size to begin with. Um, the success has um, been greater than we anticipated. The thing is, there are a number of smaller communities that are just doing this with strictly volunteers and it's not working. We believe our model can actually go into a community and self-support. And so that's why we're excited about this, because we think it's replicable in other communities around the country. So Steve, what would be your greatest success? No, I'm kidding. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what would the 100,000 that you're looking for tonight actually cover? Okay, so what we are doing, we need $300,000 to start this first facility. We need about, so about $200,000 will go for renovations of the facility, and then another $100,000 would be for um, things like, uh, you know, um, 
things for the store, like uh, those racks um, for like phones, for like computers, uh, things like that. And then we also need to start staff a tiny bit early before the store opens. And so we need a little bit to start picking up furniture so that we have a, the furniture coming in uh, when we're ready to open. So would this $100,000 then give you, would this be your second store furniture with a heart? Yes, this okay. would be our second one. That's so, correct. So the concept has been proven. Well, yes, but we haven't done it combined under one roof. So our, our goal here is to save additional revenue by utilizing the staff for both operations, for the furniture bank and for the thrift store. Because right now we're split, the, one, the thrift store is on the east side on Morse Road, our furniture bank is down on Yale on, on the west side. And by bringing the two together, what, what's the percent of increase in efficiency you think you'll get? Um, well, we actually think right now we, we could not um, we could not support the furniture bank by, by this store from the, from the revenues from the store. But we think we can save actually probably about um, 20, 25% by bringing them together. Okay. And then um, again, that surplus would then pay for all the staff on the furniture bank side and for the collection of the furniture and for the delivering to families. Thank you, Steve. Okay, thank you.